you might have noticed the light box in the back. Um, it's a pretty cool new addition to the guild. Um, thank you, Wynn, for purchasing it for us. Thank you. Appreciate it. No, I just, I, I didn't buy it. The guild bought it. Oh, somebody bought it. The guild bought it. The guild bought it, but you bought it for you us. Can okay. it. Our dues <laughs> So, but in so many cases, um, the digital images of our work um, touch so many more people than our physical images. People see them on our websites, in our social media, in gallery announcements, in the guild marketing, um, all that kind of thing. Um, and they live on forever. Even if you drop the mug or the vase is broken, you still have that digital image. So it's so nice to have a, a quality image that is as beautiful as the physical piece is. And so Terry's really gonna tell us a lot about how to make the best <coughs> pictures possible. But I wanted to share with you that the box is here because you're gonna be able to use it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, have a minute. <laughs> All right, so some of the objectives you know, are to effectively use the box, but also to capture members' pictures too, so they can be used by the gallery and the guild um, for marketing. With your permission, if anybody you know, has a release statement or they use or um, a permission slip to let the guild or the gallery use your information, if you could share that with me and we can make that a formal part of the process, or we can just be informal about it either way. Um, but um, the, there are a lot of benefits for you, too, to have the light box here at each meeting. Um, it will allow you to make pictures to attract potential customers. If you do any applications to galleries or shows, you'll have a nice portfolio you can use uh, from those pictures. You'll have a documentation of your creative legacy, and you won't have to invest in the photo box because it's right here. So that's a good one. Um, <coughs> so uh, if you'd like to register to use it, you can contact me. We also have a sign-up sheet on the back table here on the, at the back door. Um, let me just see what, where I am now. Okay, so um, we'll have three time slots available before each meeting. And the times are up there, 6.40, 6.50, 7 o'clock. Um, and you should bring your phone or a camera to take the pictures using the light box. Um, and we're just setting some parameters to start out, maybe three to five pieces you can get through in 10 minutes. Um, and we'll learn about that though. You know, some people might be faster than others. You, you'll learn that you could bring more pieces, um, or you may have some you know, special staging you wanna do with props, um, flowers, risers, you know, that kind of thing that might take a little bit longer, so maybe you can only get through three. Um, so I think that uh, covers it. Oh, um, and Terry recommended to me that we start with pieces that are just 15 by 15 by 15 because the box is a good size, but you don't want it to fill up the whole box. You want to be able to get a, a nice image that's isolated by itself. Um, are there any questions about that? Mm -hmm. Let me say yeah. something about the gallery, too. Oh, and Terry's going to talk about the gallery availability. Judy. I was just going to ask, 15 by 15 by 15 is a pretty good sized piece. Yeah. And it can really work in that box. All will be revealed. Okay. <laughs> she's going to tell us a lot more about the box, how to take pictures, where else it might be available. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, costs or where you would get a box like that from? Um, how much do you um, It was um, 115 or 119. Do you remember? Um, and it's shipping included, and you can, <clears throat> this particular box came off of uh, Amazon, uh, b and Photo also sells this box, and um, nowadays Amazon requires your first photo to have a white background, so as you can imagine, there's a lot of products available for people to do that with, and we, we looked at a bunch of them, and uh, this was a kind of um, kind of hands down the most appropriate for us. And so, and did so that cheap, include the, the backgrounds? Everything. The backgrounds that There's extra. four backgrounds in it. In, in yeah. So you you yeah. can go on Amazon and look for a light box. Is that what it's called? Um, uh, there'll be a slide on here that'll say the brand of it because actually on Amazon 
uh, it doesn't come up as easily as a bunch of other ones, but if you know what to look for, then you can find it. So I'll, you, when we get to that slide, you can write down the brand of it. B and H photo, yeah. Um, so. And I was under the impression that we were going to have uh, practice. We should bring pieces today. If you did, we certainly so, can use them. You know, if we have time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and one of them is white. Now would white show? Yeah. Right. We have different backgrounds. We do have a white background yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Um, so how this is going to work with with the gallery is similar to the meetings. You'll make an appointment with me. Um, because I live really close to the gallery, I'll meet you there, and um, and we can just we can set up, and you can just take all the pictures you want uh, that, that you have in the gallery. So uh, it it goes pretty quick. So I'm going to turn it over to Terry. I bet a lot of questions you might have or think of in the next few minutes are going to be covered in her presentation. Okay. Take it away. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Erica. Well, I, okay. <laughs> well, they already uh, introduced me. I'm Terry Wilson, and um, th kind of a lot what Erica said. I, I joined last year in 2019 in January, and I was juried in that spring uh, jurying thing. Um, but what Cecile said was, I want to clarify this business about that I volunteer for everything. <laughs> Um, people ask me to do something, and I can't say no. So it's, this is a fine, fine uh, line of a, of a difference there. Um, so uh, so my photography is, uh, I'm a stock photographer. And what that is, is that's um, uh, pictures on products, pictures on uh, illustrating um, articles and magazines or blogs, um, commercials. It's like clip art, only it's photography. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of my style of, of stock photography is stuff on white backgrounds. Uh, it's, it's a very versatile way to do it. I mean, that's not the only way to shoot, and we'll see different ways to do pottery, but that's kind of where I come into, into this and, and being um, appropriate to tell you guys how to shoot. I don't shoot weddings or anything like that. I do this kind of stuff. Uh, and if you would look me up on either Getty or iStock, there's another Terry Wilson there. It's not me. So you have to look at terif for terrific 3D. There was a time when I did some 3D photography, and I don't really do that so much anymore, but um, that, that was the only way I could use terrific, because somebody else had terrific, and even though they weren't an active member, they wouldn't let me use that username. So anyway, that's how you would find my stuff there. And you'll find some kind of mundane stock photography, like duct tape. Uh, yeah, we could dim the lights, yeah. Okay, well, well, let's get started on this. I'm gonna sit down, if that's okay. So um, we probably, uh, you probably know all the reasons that you would want to do your own uh, good photography. Oh, that's a nice plate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is one of the largest plates. Um, I, I picked out some of the largest things in the gallery uh, to use in this presentation just to prove that you can put big stuff in there. Um, and by the way, there is a clause in, in your contract that says, you grant permission <laughs> for educational and promotional purposes. So if you see your picture up here, um, that's, I'm not trying to pull a fast one. So yeah, that's Gail's, it's a, it's a shallow bowl, but it's a plate, 14 inches. So um, like the Beatrice Wood thing that's coming up, that would be uh, ideal to have a really nice shot. It just makes your work look better. Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another large piece that's in our one of the biggest pieces is a, a 12 inch wide and high face the, the rose and it um, fit just fine uh, it didn't fit with all the, the with the flowers that she had in it so I had to take those out 
So um, tonight's presentation, we're going to talk more about cell phones, but if you have a standard camera, then um, of course, you know, use that. Um, you might want to use, use a tripod uh, if you're going to use a box like this, but cell phones nowadays are, are, are really good and a lot of photographers are um, using their cell phone more than their, their big cameras. Um, there's different ways to, to shoot these uh, pictures. You can use natural light, like outdoors. Um, uh, you can use a box like ours that has the lights enclosed. Uh, you can get boxes that are translucent and you bring the light to them. Um, and you can not use a box, but just have a setup and use studio lighting if you have that. Uh, the way I do my studio lighting these days is um, a single uh, stu studio light. My, my brightest light uh, is a, a 1600 watt, which is a pretty bright light. And I point it to the ceiling where it bounces down onto my subject. So that's like that's kind of like shooting outdoors on a cloudy day where you have nothing but diffused light. So those are some other ways to do it. Um, <clears throat> now with natural light, you want to do it in the shade or under the clouds because you don't want harsh shadows. I have an example of why you don't want that. Um, and uh, the photo light box, I just said, you have interior and exterior options, but if you have an interior uh, light like we have here, you really need to either get a box that has a diffuser, um, a, a, like a translucent she, uh, sheet of, of white fabric to, um, to soften that light, uh, or you can make one yourself if you have a box that, that, if you already have a box and it has lights and and you're not happy with uh, all the reflections that you get because our stuff is shiny, uh, most of it. Some people use matte glazes and some things aren't glazed, but for the most part, um, when you have a glazed object, you're, you're likely to be fighting with um, uh, reflections that you don't want. Um, and then if you have studio lighting, you, like I just said with my light that points to the ceiling, um, there's two different kinds of lighting there. The kind that fire off when your camera uh, shoots, or you can just have <coughs> lights that are on all the time, and that's when you would use a um, tripod so you could have a long exposure. So, um, with natural lighting, this, is, this picture was taken uh, outside the gallery. It's one of Ellen's bowls. And it's um, uh, the the light was behind the building to the to the left of the gallery or to the right of the gallery to the west of the gallery. So there wasn't um, there there wasn't much sense of, of direction of the light. You can just kind of you could see kind of where it um, darker on this side than on that side, but. It, it's almost a little too flat, but uh, still, you get um, you get to see the whole bowl. You get to see the color that it is. Terry, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I notice you're getting the detail from the very foreground to the background. There doesn't seem to be any fuzziness. Yeah. Well, that's um, that's a very astute question. Um, when you use a cell phone, the the ca the cell phone cameras are um, the lens in a cell phone camera is is a somewhat wide angle lens and the characteristic of a wide angle lens is that you get a, a deeper depth of field so it's um it's not great for stuff like this where you kind of want the background to to fade out mm -hmm. um so aside from that little issue um now the the newest cameras have uh, instead of one camera, they'll have three cameras or two cameras, and they can use the additional camera to to understand the depth, you know, by using binocular stereo vision. 
to know where the depth is. And so um, the newer cameras will have what's called portrait mode. And what that means is that it identifies the face um, and, and then stuff that's, that's deeper than that, they, they artificially uh, um, blur a little bit. So um, I asked uh, Katya to, she has one of these great iPhones that has this, and she took some pictures in, in her studio um, of that, uh, and, and, it, and it works. It's not, it's not a graduated um, blurriness. It's not as good as a, a regular camera on a um, uh, wide open aperture. I don't want to get, I don't want to blind you with science. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's what happens with a phone. Now, um, I walked over to the area where the, the map of the islands are, and it was in full sunlight. And this is what happens in, in sunlight. And uh, it's just, it just not, not nice. Uh, it almost looks like a snapshot. Uh, it, that, that's fine if you're going to take a picture of something so you can refer to it later to jog your memory or uh, a record shot. But um, but to photograph your work, you, you really want to avoid those harsh shadows. And in, in this case, you can still kind of see what's going on in the shadow, shadow area, but that's often not the case at all. Uh, it, it, can, it can get really dark in there. Um, this is the box that we have. So, um, Photo Diox is the brand of it, and um, that's if you go on Amazon, uh, and you can walk up to the box afterwards and write that down too. Um, that's what you would, that's what you would search for, and then they have a bunch of stuff, and they and they have this box. Um, the guy with the man bun is from their website. That's not one of us. I just picked, picked this off their website. So uh, that's how it works, and, except that ours is on a table. Um, the backdrops that it comes with, um, white, gray, black, and blue, we'll go over those soon. Um, OK, so um, when we got this, I was, I was um, concerned that we would have that it would be a box that had a diffuser in it. And the reason being that with glazed pottery, you, you get really harsh reflections, especially in bowls um, uh, or a plate where the, the horizontal surface is gonna give you that reflection. And our box has a, has a square grid of LED lights. And um, I don't know if you could tell, yeah. you can see the dottiness of that yeah. square. So with the diffuser, you still kind of see it, um, but it's not, it's not nearly so bad. Uh, and if you would position yourself so that if there's enough of a curvature or irregularity of the surface to, to kind of break up that square, um, you, you wouldn't notice it nearly as much. But um, it, it, it does still kind of show, but not as much. If you use Photoshop and you enjoy using Photoshop, you could do that and just like, get rid of it all together. Patch tool, great tool. Um, this is one of my pieces. It's got a lot of curves on it. And when you have a lot of curves, you get these crazy, bizarre uh, reflections all over the place. And with the diffuser, you, you just don't even see them. If you know they're there, you can kind of see them. But Really, you can't see them at all. Uh, if you're if you're using matte glazes, then it's not an issue uh, with the reflections. But you do get a nicer uh, shadow underneath your piece. How, how is the camera pointed um, when you're standing? Were you standing by the box? Yeah, I'm standing kind of right in the piece this size. I was standing kind of right at the opening of it. Okay. Because this is a wide angle lens, you kind of have to be pretty yeah. close to it. But yeah. there are problems associated with that um, we'll get into. Yeah. If you have a regular camera, um, 
you, you have a lot more options with with this box. But then you, you will likely need a tripod too. Um, okay, so this is another, um, no, this is a large piece. This is only about that big. So this is the white background. Um, uh, Christine's piece. Uh, we have white, gray, black. Um, ideally, black would be non-reflective. Ours is kind of reflective. Um, another uh, background could be natural stuff that you uh, that you might have at home. Um, uh, a, a smooth um, <coughs> countertop, maybe that's that's not real that's not real pattern. Um, outside uh, wood. Um, stone and then environmental backgrounds that means like a table setting or um, a, a, a piece in use and sees its surroundings so those are the kind of backgrounds that you can use um, but you have to you, you you never want the background to compete with your piece that's the only that's the only caveat there now with the white background, um, it's you, you you do it on a white background for versatility also because you can float this in a layout and not have to not have to have it in a box. Uh, I use this uh, this technique a lot in the the pieces that I design for the gallery, where the, the uh, pieces just float and I can wrap type around them. Um, Okay, now the gray background um, works really great for, for white, obviously, but gray is a, is a nice uh, color for just about anything. Um, it's, yeah, it's soft, it, uh, um, it, it lets your piece kind of stand out, and you can see the difference between um, this piece on black and white on this black background that light area is the is the back yeah. curve yeah it's not a hard curve it's still curved but it reflects the light directly into the camera so um, so that's something to watch out for <coughs> uh, I'll talk about that in a minute now the white background um, you can kind of point to my thing um, you can you, you might be able to, to see the difference uh, actually, I don't really see it so much on screen as I do here. Uh, th there's just a little bit more um, uh, definition when it's on the back background because of the uh, exposure that the that the camera is trying to make. What is that on the black one? There's a, a strip. Yeah, that's that's, that's the the the, um, the reflection where it bends the where the where the backdrop bends <laughs> because at that point the light is is reflecting back into the camera. Right. And this is another large piece in the gallery. I, I didn't write down, I didn't measure this, but. It's this big. Yeah, it's, it's, it's big. And, and, I, and I tilted it uh, diagonally instead of straight on. It's just a better pose for that piece. Now, if you use a, like, a non-shiny black, I think there's probably some reflection on that going on in there to get that strip. Would that take care of that strip? That uh, white, yeah, that yeah. If you had, not yeah. Either question. yeah. If if you had a non-reflective back, bl uh, black, back, the like black background. Yeah. Like yeah. If you had a piece of matte paper or right. velvet, yeah, you you might pick up a little bit because um, it just because of the the direction of the light. I mean, yeah. there is still some pieces of something matte that's going to reflect back, but it wouldn't be like that. And for this kind of photography, um, to get a black background, uh, it doesn't need to be strictly black. Right. Um, like in art photography, some some art photography, yeah, you, it relies on having a, a real black background. But there's but the the black background we have, despite this 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 curve uh, for smaller pieces, I, I've got an example here. Really looks good. 
Um, so with the gray, here's some more gray backgrounds, um, a white piece, and it just, you just see so much more happening with this one. And the, the gray interior of that, it just doesn't look, um, you know, the whole thing looks white here. There you wonder, oh, is the inside gray? Or, you know, something. Um, and this is another one that it looks good on white, but you know, on the gray, you see that knife, that wonderful edge, um, that, that white ed that white edge of it just goes into the background on the white, but on the gray, it you can you can see that curve. It's just a more uh, a more well-defined piece. Is this a plate stand? Um, I propped that up with something. It's it's elevated a, a little bit. It's not flat. So I didn't bring anything tonight, but I'm gonna start bringing something that you can prop your um, your things on. This isn't propped up as much as it would be on a plate stand, but it's a little more like that. It's not on the stand. Uh, no, I put something behind it so that it yeah. laid like that. Um, do you know if the gray that you have there, is that a cool gray or a warm gray? Do you know it's, um, it's what they call 18% gray and, a, and it's mm -hmm. supposed to be a true gray. It's a okay. photographic standard okay. of gray. It looks bluer in this photograph than in the other uh, one. Well, like. yeah, it does kind of, but uh, and on my screen it's <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Grade. Yeah, this this whole thing has uh, this has more of a different. Yeah, it's got a little different cast. But um, in in Photoshop, you can um, color correct things to make sure that it's gray and it's white and black. Okay, here's the black background. So when. Um, when I said it doesn't strictly have to be black for this kind of photography, this is kind of what I meant. I mean, you know that it's a black background, but um, well, maybe it's just a dark gray background. When I when I did the the um, the, the color correction on this, I sampled for the this blackest part to make that the blackest part mm -hmm. uh, right under the. Um, Oh, you know, in, in the, yeah, in the shadow right at the base of this. So the rest of it was not quite black, but um, you have this, this really nice shadow down here. Uh, the light area that, you know, proves that that's a shadow and that's a three-dimensional object. Uh, but this piece really looks good on the black, you know, these nice shapes and then those couple of little black elements that resonate with the black background. Um, it's just a really good example of something that you could shoot on black. Was that with the diffuser on? Huh? Was that with the diffuser on? Everything has a diffuser on so from this point. Was this piece a shiny piece? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, isn't it, Arnie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's pretty shiny, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it almost, I mean, it almost looks like a satin finish. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I, I, I think they're pretty shiny. Yeah, in the in that blue part, you can kind of see some yeah. some highlights. I mean, there there is a case for having those specular highlights. That's what it's called when the sun or something light has a direct reflection. Um, there are times when that's when that's good to 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 show that it. Yeah, this is a really shiny object. But when you have lights that are shaped like a square, that's not a good time to do it. So. Uh, yeah, um, you can see some highlights, uh, like on the left over there, and in the blue. Um, if you have a piece that's not reflecting those square lights, uh, and and um, and you take uh, you take the diffuser off and use uh, use it without the diffuser, there are some pieces that aren't going to show that uh, that square pattern. And so you might want to do it that way um, to get that shininess. You, you, you just don't want distracting patterns to show up. So welcome to experiment. Mm -hmm.
Um, and now the other background that they give us is called, it's blue, and they call it a blue screen um, or a green screen. Uh, other, you, you, if you shop online, you'll see some things come with a green screen. And what those are used for is um, uh, people shooting um, a person or a scene, or maybe you've been to some amusement where, where they, they take a picture of you and your partner and they say, okay, what kind of background do you want? Well, when they uh, shoot, um, the, when they shoot you against either this blue or this green, they can drop that out real easily uh, and replace it with something else. And they use it a lot in video. But uh, for this kind of stuff, when you have a shadow, uh, it doesn't work so well. Mm -hmm. And it's really not meant for, for a colored, it's not meant to be used like this. But uh, we have um, Christine's work that actually works with this background. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else in that gallery is gonna work. <laughs> uh, it just, it's just too bright. It's just... Um, Did you Photoshop some of the shadow out? Because I barely see a shadow on there. Well, it's laying flat on the okay. on the piece, so there's there's a little bit of a shadow. No, I see a little bit. Yeah. I didn't do any Photoshop work. Now this this butter keeper over here, I, I threw that in just to yeah. just to show that yeah. you know it doesn't it's not really what you want to um, what you want to shoot your work against. Did you shoot that flat from above? I shot it. Um, uh, I, you know, I think I may have propped this one up a little bit. You can see there's a little more shadow on the top part of the tail. Mm -hmm. um, so I may have propped it up a little bit so I didn't have to be inside the box mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, um, Yeah, maybe just um, uh, a, an inch and a half of something, it was just propped up a little bit. So that's what uh, this, we, we have this screen uh, this backdrop with our collection of backdrops. So, Christine, if you want to use it, fine. <laughs> but I wouldn't really recommend it. <laughs> because see, you can see the, the, the blue color is kind of the same as in there, and it's these really yeah. bright colors, and it looks like ocean, and it's, um, yeah, okay. So, um, it, I picked this up off the internet at Etsy. So this is an example of uh, something that you could do out in the backyard with um, natural materials, um, a, a clean sidewalk or a picnic tabletop, um, sand. Um, and, and this is taken with a camera like Victoria was wondering about the background. This was not taken with a phone. This was taken with a regular camera on a, a wide open aperture. Um, that will that will create that that softness in the background so some of you may have that kind of equipment and um, that they it, it makes for a beautiful photograph uh, should complement your style so something that's ultra modern you you would probably want on something like concrete or something more uh, befitting your piece than than rough wood you know wouldn't really work with something really contemporary. Sorry, it's the vibration. <laughs> Somebody's calling me. So. Um, and then uh, and this is an example of an environmental type of setting. Again, this is from Etsy. It's not one of us. Um, so you could shoot something like this. Now, if you do if you do indoor shots, you're going to need <clears throat> a lot of light. So if you have a situation near a, a window with a lot of light, or if you have artificial lights, uh, if you have a camera with a tripod, um, it's, it's not as easy with, a, on, with an iPhone or a phone uh, as it is with a regular camera. Um, but, they, but they make good illustrations of your, your um, product in, in use and how, how people would use them. Um, now, we want to talk a little bit about staging, and I, I told someone earlier today that I um, shoot a lot of my stuff in my own studio with a single light pointed to the ceiling, and then it bounces down on my object, and that's how this was shot. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it, the, the, the light basically makes the whole ceiling into the light source. So you get this really <coughs> soft, uh, soft light, and um, that's how that was shot. So um, with, with staging, with a, with a single object, it's, it's, not, it's not that hard to, to figure out. You want to point it um, not directly forward unless you've got a, a graphic that you want on the front. Um, it, you want to stage things a, a couple different ways so you have a choice later. Um, you can shoot them from higher up or from straight from the front. Um, and in this case, uh, this, this little group, uh, I, I like to treat my pieces like it's, it's a little group of people. So uh, it's like the, the two pieces in the back are in conversation and their kids are up front. <laughs> uh, what do you mean by no tangent edges? A tangent edge would be if, if these two pieces just touched well, they didn't overlap and there wasn't a space. Yeah, if they overlap uh, or if they're apart, but if they just kiss each other like that, that's a tangent edge. And it's, um, it's, it's just not a good principle in, in art, you know, to, to do that. Um, it, it can be confusing and um, when you have a, a little space between them, it just creates a little more uh, interest in the composition. Um, in this case, when I took this picture, it, I uh, tried it with the with the uh, sugar bowl, um, uh, you know, more to the left so that the salt shaker overlapped it, and it was just too tight. So I moved it away from it, and I said, "Oh yeah, that works." So you've got this little group of three and a single one, and you know, you always talk about groups of three, and yeah, this is, um, and, and you want to position things so that, so that, uh, like the edge of the leaf showed, and um, the, I could have put those shakers so that all you saw was one leaf, but I made sure that you could see the edges, and yeah. um, so when you have a group, you'll, be playing around with it um, for a while, and uh, take a bunch of different ones. And this is kind of a square format. I tend to shoot everything in a square format. On the phone, you can um, you can choose square, or at least on my phone, um, and it, uh, it it kind of makes everything kind of tight, and it's a more useful. Um, image to use in a layout um, but if you have um, if you have multiple pieces you could also do a horizontal layout or something that was more vertical um, actually I think the next slide is is exactly like that um, this is uh, Rebecca's sake set so there's a horizontal one see notice on the same deal there there's one that's a little bit apart from the others and the taller thing is kind of the middle, and and this they kind of come in a curve uh, to the front. Uh, this is a symmetrical style, uh, and then from a higher angle is a different idea, and then from a low angle is a is another uh, is another idea. I think this is probably a little more interesting than the high angle, but you know you can do. Um, do a variety of compositions. Um, if you have something that that is in uh, different parts, this is that butter keeper again, uh, taken apart. And in this case, there's a little paper that Wanda puts in there that tells you how to use it and what it's all about. So by using that in your photo, people get that information too. Um, so I, I know there's a lot of a number of things in the gallery that have little explanations so consider doing a photograph with your little piece of paper in there it doesn't have to show everything you know this, this is curved because it was curled up in there um, but that's a 
that's a, a good way to, to get that documentation out there without having to write a whole caption about it. Um, oh, and ideally, you would have that filled up with butter, but I wasn't going <laughs> to I wasn't gonna do that. I took all these at the gallery, so. Um, okay, so <laughs> you've probably all seen pictures like this with the, <laughs> and, and maybe you've had somebody take a picture of you with a cell phone where, where, where your nose looks big. Um, so this is inherent to, to the wide angle lenses of cell phones. So um, when you have a small piece, your tendency is to want to get up close to it and fill the frame uh, with that small piece, but um, it's not always a good idea. Uh, that said, this distortion can sometimes be used to your advantage, so we'll look at that. Uh, <laughs> So Terry, if when you took this picture, could you see the distortion in your viewfinder, or do you not see it until? Oh, you, oh yeah, you'll see. You oh. see what you get. Okay. Actually, I got this off the internet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a really wide angle lens. This isn't. Um, you, you wouldn't get that extreme of a picture. This is a professional photographer. He has a lot of. A lot of these kind of pictures on his website, so I just left that one. Okay, so when you have a small, a small piece and it's somewhat vertical, if it's kind of rounded, it it's not going to make any difference. If I shoot my jewelry up close, and it all looks believable. Um, if you have something that's tapered or um, well vertical, uh, with with some kind of uh, um, like a cylinder or something that's has some kind of regularity to it. Um, it, it the distortion is, is pretty obvious. So this is what the viewfinder saw in both cases. So when I moved in close and took it, it looks like a, a, a really flared cup. Um, but so for this one, I backed up and, um, and it's a, a more, it's a truer, representation of what that looks like. So you cropped it. So the top yeah, was the crop. Yeah, I cropped I it. it. So, um, so yeah, I cropped it and I had to throw away all those pixels, but it's still, for a lot of things, it's still plenty big. Um, 862 pixels, and we'll look at that later. Um, yeah, you know, I could put that on uh, the three and a half inch image printed. It, it would, it's enough resolution for that. And it's this big on, say, a web page. Um, so, let's see, I had another thought. Oh yeah. So why this happens is that if if this is your object, and your your camera is like right here, this distance is a lot closer than this distance. But if your camera is way back here, it's not much of a difference in distance. It's a little bit closer but not enough to, that's why you don't get that distortion as you move back. So when people take um, portraits, I mean, if a portrait photographer takes your, your, your portrait, he's going to be uh, no closer than I am to any of you guys far away. You know, he doesn't get in your face and take your picture. It's, it's back a ways. Um, and that's why, because you don't want your face to be distorted. So uh, when you have small objects, um, uh, unless they're, like I say, if they're rounded, but you'll see, you'll see when you take it if it's, if it's gonna be a problem. Now in this case, this is a nested set of bowls, and one is obviously smaller than the other, or it wouldn't go in the, in the inside. So if you um, put the small one in front, mm -hmm. the same. And, and you let it fill the frame, um, the, the, the distortion makes it makes them look almost the same size. So I didn't do anything but move back and um, uh, and then it looked it looked more uh, proportional. Uh, another way to do it would be to put the other piece behind um, the big bowl. Okay, so, I have another question. Yeah. When you're doing things that are that dark, um, 
I, I feel like it's missing detail. What could, could the background change it or uh, what could bring up, how could you make it brighter? Well, in this case, it's a pretty dark blue. Yeah, it is. And there's not a lot of, there's no patterning or uh, glaze effects <laughs> or anything in it. So there wasn't really any reason to. Did you have the light directly overhead or? Well, this is in the box. So the light is like, here's the box and the light is at, at looking down on it. Uh, you can see some reflections in the bottom a little bit. <coughs> But they're they really from the same angle of light. Uh, yeah, they're they're all the lights coming from directly above, and uh, both of these are the same pose. And I just backed up for this one. So you could uh, lighten it up with uh, your controls on your phone or in Photoshop if you use Photoshop. Um, but in this case, it seemed to be realistically exposed because it's a really dark blue and then you do see some contouring in there and you get the edges of the bowl and so yeah I think that's okay in this in this case. What about it? Maybe like a gray background? Um, a gray background. Um, I don't know if that would make that much difference in uh, in in the in the detail or if it would um, you, you I, might I had that problem too sometimes. With you know, the really dark things? Just having, I switch up everything just to get, see if I can get the detail that I need using the <coughs> colors or different yeah. settings and stuff. Well, um, you could try, you could try it with the gray and see what happens. Do you have a question in the back? It seems like it's like a silhouette if it's, if it's a light background. Yeah. With the dark colors, so it was a little bit darker color. Yeah. And what about the angle? Is it a 45 or? Uh, that's kind of a, about a 45 degree angle, probably. Yeah. Is it the best angle? No, it depends on what you want. Uh, you saw in that other one, different angles the the sake set. I, I kind of like a, a low angle. I think it's um, more, in, more interesting. Um, you know, that's just my personal yeah. taste on that. Uh, with this box, it's it's easy to to do it at a high, at a like a 45 degree angle. It's kind of hard to do it at a real high angle. I'm sorry, do you ever light from the bottom and reflect it from the top? Um, you mean if like, like on a piece of on floor, like on a piece of plexiglass? So bounce back down and you get underneath as well as into. Well, what you could do is uh, well the 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 uh, background itself reflects a lot of light up into it. I mean, you can see that it's uh, the interior up here is actually darker than than what's on the outside. It's because the the backdrop is on the bottom as well, and it's reflecting light back up onto the outside of the bowl. Um, you could, if you wanted to, um, add a little a little more uh, fill light. They call it. You could take a um, a car, white card or something, and position it at an angle so that it would it would reflect even more light onto the side. Mm. But this box does a great job just without any any fussing. But those are things that you could do with. In fact, with with the when I shoot from to my ceiling and down, I often have a white card that um, that is angled such to bring a little bit of light in on the side. Okay, here's another um, another way to use that uh, distortion to good effect. When I set this shot up, the one on the left, um, I said, oh, that cup's bigger. And it really was bigger. Not too much, just a little bit bigger. It wasn't like it does, didn't belong in the set or anything, it was just a little bit bigger than the other one. And when I put it in front, it made it look really bigger. <laughs> so I just switched the two cups and it, it equalized them. Yeah. So it made the smaller one look bigger so they both look the same mm -hmm. size. Mm -hmm. So if you have something like that, if you have a, a set and they're not quite, it's a, you know, things happen, um, you, can, um, you can do something like that. 
and fix it. And uh, don't forget close-ups. So if you do stuff with a lot of detail, like Ellen and Christine, you want to like um, uh, bring that out to people. Show them what what's in in that. You know, you have a big picture. You want to let them see what's really in there. Uh, if you have interesting uh, color combinations like uh, Victoria's mug or um, interesting glazes um, or just or, or just a, a little abstraction of your piece um, don't forget to zoom in and do some close-ups because that kind of makes that's like one more piece to you've got um, you've got your picture with you know, you've got your bowl with berries or something in it, and then you've got it without anything, and you've got a couple of different poses. If you have some close-ups, that really completes the set of what that piece is all about. Now you're talking about zooming in on your phone? No, um, or, um, we'll talk about that in a minute too. It's one of my bugaboos. It's just yeah. getting just getting closer, or 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 taking or taking a piece out of something that a larger picture. Um, yeah, cropping it down more, but um, but to but to get a, 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 a small crop that's going to be usable, you, you do want to move in a little closer, uh, so that uh, so move in a little closer to to get the good picture, but then crop it using regular art guidelines. You know, like nothing comes out of a corner. Um, uh, things have a, a compositional. Uh, rule of thirds, you know, all that kind of concepts that you've probably learned um, in art. Um, so uh, don't forget the close, I, I love to, I love to see close-ups of, mm -hmm. you know, get down uh, really close and, you know, sometimes you can't even see these things that well with the naked eye, like all that stuff going on in Christine's pieces, oh. that's like this big. And it's all that detail, and it's like, oh my god. You know, so if you, if you do some close, and the same with Ellen's work, it's just so much detail. You don't charge enough for your work. I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> all, those little, all those little yellow dots. Okay. So um, I just want to say a few things about um, when you shoot on, on white, your, your camera tries to um, tries to do an even exposure and a, a camera normally can't believe that something is going to be totally white with no with no value at all so it it's going to like gray it down a little bit so you can do a little adjust adjustment on your camera but you can also do it in Photoshop um, and I'm going to show you that in a second it's really easy um, but you do have some controls in in your camera. So let's, um, let's see, let me just quickly move to um, a random picture. I should have set this up better. Oh, this is in my photo talk. If you open this up in Photoshop, um, uh, here's the little info palette, and um, I'm going to go into levels. Okay. Now, when you're um, in, in levels, um, th this little eyedropper will, sh will show you over here where it says RGB, pure white would be 255 on all, all three of these over there. So um, there's, there's no pure white here. So um, in levels, we have these three eyedroppers for black, um, uh, gray, and white. So we're going to click that 
and then we're gonna a sample of, of where we want to be pure white. So we'll do it here, because we don't want to do it here, because we want that shadow. So we'll do it, say, here, and then we'll brighten that up, and it'll also uh, color correct, because now it knows what white is supposed to be. So if there was a cast, it's going to correct it a little bit. You didn't really see much change in the green, but there was a little bit of a change. So um, now this, the background here is still kind of gray, because that's this is the curve, and this is the back. Uh, we, we could click up here, it's going to be really bright, a little too much, so we're going to just leave it kind of down here. Um, so when you do something tall where you see the back, um, you're going you're gonna to have to deal with this. Yeah. Um, uh, this bright spot here. So anyway, that's how I um, do the, the color correction and and, and get that. That's how I processed all these pictures here. Uh, I, I could do a lot more sophisticated work with masking and, and you know, outlining, and do, doing layers and all this stuff. But um, for the most part, this is really this is adequate. So that's how that's how I would do that in Photoshop. Sample an image to set white point. And if you're on a, a gray background. You can do the same thing with gray, except that it's not going to it's not going to change the exposure. It's just going to color correct it. Can you change the color of the box? We'll say blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could do anything you want. Well, I mean, you can make them in several different colors, but only want to have one photograph and say you don't like the green. Well, I should just do it in blue, but you don't have a blue set. Can you make those blue? Oh, you mean, can, you, can, I, can I make the, these? Can you make those the, the, uh, blue? Can I change the color? Yeah, sure, yeah. you can do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, cool. it's beyond the scope of my talk today. But yeah, um, yeah, that's uh, not, not a problem, especially if you have a white background. It's easy to do. Oh, well, I wouldn't say easy to do it, but um, you can really literally do anything in Photoshop. Amazing program. So um, that's image adjustments and a word about file sizes. Okay, so um, with, the, with the cell phone cameras, you could take a picture, if you use the whole frame of it, about uh, 3,000 by 4,000 pixels. Um, and uh, for the internet, that's, that's way bigger than you really need. Um, so on, um, on the internet, uh, 14 pixels is, well, is about like this in a, in a, in a browser window. Um, in email, um, you could go even smaller uh, because, it, it, I don't know if you've ever gotten, I'm sure you have gotten an email where there's a huge picture and you have it's to scroll forever. to see it. It's, and you could never see the whole thing, it's too big. Yeah. So in email, um, well, some email programs will downsize it so you can see it, but um, you don't need a whole lot for social media and email and stuff. Um, uh, so that said, if you're going to do print work, then, then you do need all those pixels because of the way printing works and um, halftone screens and four color printing and all that stuff. It, it gets really complicated. Um, but the, the thing to know is that uh, you need 240 pixels per inch to get a good picture, that it's not going to look uh, blocky or fuzzy. Uh, but to put that into perspective, um, a full frame, um, 3,000 by 4,000 picture, you can get a 12 inch image printed. Uh, even that little uh, shot glass I showed you that's cropped way down, that's big enough for something like that. So, um, uh, so, so you want as much as possible, um, and then whoever's going to be doing the printing can always uh, downsize it if they want to. So somebody says, yeah, send me, send me the picture you have on your phone. When, when you get to the choice of <coughs> small, medium, large, original size, or actual size, send actual size. That's what uh, that'll send the whole thing, and then it's, it's there, and then it's up to them. 
Um, if, if you want to think in terms of megapixels, um, and that's a 12 megapixel image, what a phone does. Uh, I, I tend to think in terms of pixel dimensions. Uh, and then um, zooming in. Now, when you uh, zoom in, like if I had zoomed in on that shot glass, um, the phone would have said, oh, you want this at uh, 3,000 by 4,000? Okay, we'll just make it bigger. And it just makes up all those extra pixels. And so you get this kind of fuzzy image mm -hmm. um, because the camera is only, the sensor on here is only going to see what it's going to see. And if you try to blow it up, it's going to, it's going to make up, it, it still only sees it at that smaller part of the sensor that it's on. So it's going to try to stretch it out to give you what you want. So um, you really don't want to do that that kind of zooming in. Now, if you have a newer camera that has um, the telephoto, um, Katya has one of those, and it, it actually has a telephoto lens on it. Well, I mean, it's 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 not like you, you, you can shoot a polar bear catching a fish from across the lake. It's but, a 2x. Um, it's a 2x. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll say it'll say two x. You click that, so it's a different lens. So it does zoom in, but it's not it's not zooming in artificially. You're actually getting um, uh, a native resolution. So that's okay to zoom in. Otherwise, you might as well just do what I did with the shot glass and crop it down. Right. So um, it, it's okay to zoom in initially to see that you. You're, you've got what you're what you think you're going to get, but then go back down to to uh, the native the you know actual size. Um, and let's see, do I have anything else? Okay. Well, um, this is another large piece out of the gallery, 15 inches. Um, there's really with the great cameras we have these days on our cell phones. If you have a, a regular camera, that's wonderful and it'll take you know, superior pictures, but you can get really good pictures with your cell phone. It's here, it's ready to send to your friends or to send to um, uh, social media, um, to your computer, um, and then the boxes like that just make it kind of puts you over the top a little Terry, bit. Terry, is the crawl on that actually white? Because it looks purplish. It's kind of a, a cool white. Yeah. yeah. So he has these um, uh, reticulated glazes yeah. on a lot of things. It's, it's, it's sort white. of a bluish white. Really? Yeah. I've always I mean, it's white, but it's kind of, it's a cool <coughs> white, so. Um, I wondered if the, if the photograph changed the color. It, it does look kind of bluish, but yeah. Um, yeah. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Answering you questions can, along yeah. the way. You can adjust that by the, by the camera, right? You can do some exposure thickness or something. I mean, not adjustments on your phone and make it a little wider. Um, yeah, you could, but honestly, I, I think, uh, I think it's, it's kind of a bluish, it's kind of a, a bluish uh, white. Um, and if you did that, you might mess up the black yeah. of it. So uh, yeah, the phone, your your phone camera um, has uh, the, the editing mode, and there's a lot of things you can do yeah. uh, just in your phone too. All right. I have um, a point of view. I find this interesting. I recently had a my Lux cataract replaced yeah. with a new lens. I haven't done the right one yet. If I only look with my right eye, that's fuzzy and beigey and not too interesting. My good eye is bright and absolutely in focus and clear. So a lot of people have differences in their eyes. That's what I've heard about cataracts. Or yeah. Whatever. Actually, I've noticed in my own eye because um, 
when you look, when I look through a viewfinder on a camera, I look, I use my left eye even though I'm right-handed, and I, I notice that sometimes that when I look through, when I look with my left eye, it's not what I'm expecting. I mean, I have two different worlds going on. Yeah, well, mine's not that different, but, but one is a, is a little bit warmer than the other one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well. And if you're a gallery member and you want to take pictures at the gallery, get in touch with us. Yeah. Can we do some slides? Oh. Um, well, it's probably easier when people actually come. It's pretty straightforward. You put your piece in and shoot it. So when when you use the light box, you'll you'll be with me or or uh, Erica or Katya. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you brought stuff, we could go back there and. Think